from pskiss.com and I would like to show you how to use PSKISS Portrait Photography Toolkit. I prefer working in full screen mode with menu bar, so before I start I hit the F key once. This centers the image on a gray background with the ability to scroll or move it around later on. Okay, now let's get started. The first filter in this tutorial will be Density Build. Note that once you click on any of the filters in this panel, the image is centered and all Photoshop's panels are hidden. Don't worry, they'll be back after you click OK or Cancel. With Density Build, you can make the skin appear thicker and richer. Use the density amount to add density to skin tones. Use the Restore Red slider if you feel some of the red parts, such as lips, are oversaturated. And you can use the contrast control to enhance contrast or to decrease contrast if that's what you need. I will enhance contrast in this sample. Once you click OK, you get a new layer in the Layers panel with the name of the filter you just used. This is before and this is after. The next filter I want to show you is Expose. Expose allows you to increase or decrease exposure with 0.1 increments. Not like the camera that does it by third of an f-stop, here you do it by tenth of an f-stop. Drag to the right to brighten the exposure or you drag to the left to darken the exposure. I want to darken it just a bit so minus 0.4 looks just fine for me. Press OK, panels are back, a new layer is added in the Layers panel. Now let's discuss Punch. Punch is designed to give your portrait a snappier look. It increases overall contrast and color contrast with a level slider. Give it this deep and snappy look. Use the softness slider if you want to soften the effect and get a dreamier look. This looks nice to me. Press OK and you're done. Now let's see what we have accomplished with only three of the eight filters. This is before, this is after. Before and after a new look for this portrait. Next one is Pop-Out. Pop-Out is designed to help the, po the portrait pop out of the background in general and especially emphasize the eyes. Use the global amount this way. See how the eyes really pop out. Use the plug shadows to darken shadows of the image. Use the Restore Highlights if you feel like some of the highlights are a bit burned out. This is nice. Usually, I prefer using Pop-Out after I use Punch. So let's trash this layer. Use Punch first. Give the image this contrasty snappy look touch of softness okay and then use pop out this really gives the portrait a deeper appearance let's increase it even more plug the shadows a bit more there you go now this is before and this is after. This took about 20 seconds to achieve. Next filter in this panel will be Clarity. Clarity is designed to increase or decrease local contrast. If you drag it to the right, you get a deeper, more detailed image, very similar to the Clarity slider in the, if you're familiar with the ACR or Lightroom slider. If you drag it to the left, 
you have you decrease the local contrast and get a softer image click OK and you're done before and after cloud tape please remember that each filter can be activated by itself you can also activate them one on top of the other's results and process your photo progressively. Next one is Face Sharp. Face Sharp will sharpen anything but skin tones. As you can see, the filter uses an internal automatic mask that protects the skin tone while everything else, eyes, hair, and lips, are sharpened. The amount slider sets the intensity of sharpness, and the radius sets edge width of sharpening. Let's zoom to 100%. And you can see only eyes, hair, and lips was sharpened. No skin tone harmed in this sharpening process. On the same image before it was sharpened, I want to show you how black and white works. Black and white creates a grayscale version of your portrait using a portrait fitted conversion method. Use the density slider to darken or brighten the grayscale version. Use the detail slider to add details to the grayscale version. Now because every filter adds a layer, you can always experiment with different blending modes and get a whole new look for your portrait. Let's use overlay for example. And then you use the grayscale layer as a tone mapping for the original photograph. The last filter I want to talk about is the look factory. Actually, this is the heart and soul of this panel. To start working with the look factory, first choose a preset one of the six you find in the presets section. Let's choose natural for the first example. Note that once you do it, the intensity jumps to 50% default and all the adjustments are set by the preset. Each preset you select, the adjustments change themselves. If you want to increase the effect, drag the intensity slider to the right. If you want to weaken the effect, drag the intensity slider to the left. After you choose the initial look, you can tint the image by adding a color cast. A red cyan cast, a blue yellow cast, or no cast. You can also add light with warmth, blast, or darkness. Whatever you think fits the look you want to create. If you don't like any of them, just reset it. You can also adjust the look by changing the values of the manual adjustments. Magic controls the brightness of reds. You can get your reds brighter or darker as you like. Passion controls the brightness of yellows. This will darken the yellows and this will brighten the yellows. Stardust controls the brightness of greens. Drag it to the left, the greens get darker. Drag it to the right, the greens get brighter. Desire controls the brightness of cyans or aquas. In this particular image, you'll see it only in the deep part of the image here. You get it brighter or you get it darker. Mystery controls the brightness of blues. Look on the right hand side of the image and you see the blues getting brighter 
or darker. The last one, Secrets, controls the brightness of magentas. Look at the upper part of the trees, you can see them brighter or darker. On top of all these, you can control the vibrance and saturation of colors. Drag the saturation slider to the left to desaturate all colors, drag it to the right to saturate all colors. Note that if you drag it all the way to the left, it doesn't take all saturation off. It's not a full desaturation slider, it's only desaturating the look of the image. Also, if you drag it all the way to the right, it won't create a totally radioactive image. The vibrance slider controls colors that are already saturated to a certain amount. So if you drag it to the left, it desaturates saturated color. If you drag it to the right, it saturates the saturated color. So if you combine them together, you get a whole new look for this image. Please remember that like any other filter in this panel, the look factory can be activated on the result of any other filter or directly on the original image. Anyway, it creates a layer of its own, leaving your original image unchanged. That's all for this one. You're welcome to visit us at psks.com and learn more about our other Photoshop panels, our DNG profiles, and our presets. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.